What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codeby.com and in this video, we're going to look at select all and clearing text for a text editor with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at select all and clearing text. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codeby.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, before we get into this, I should mention we are remodeling the office. So this if this video looks a little bit off, that's because the studio is a mess. The green screen's all weird. The lighting's messed up. We've got noise going on, banging and clanging. You, you may hear it, you may not. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, this video is going to look a little different, maybe than the other ones. I might look a little brighter or something. We'll get it all figured out in the next few days. But for the next couple of days, these videos are going to be a little weird looking, maybe. I'm not even sure. Maybe they look normal. <laughs> we'll see. But in this video, we want to look at select all and clearing text. So if we head over here, we've got this select all, it selects everything. If we want to clear everything, we clear it. Uh, we can just type anything. We don't have to select. We can just click clear and that clear. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. We're in textpad.py. If you haven't seen the previous uh, videos on this text editor project, check out the comment section below. There should be a link to the playlist. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So first thing we want to do is come down to our file menu thing. And actually we want the edit menu. And I'm going to add another little separator under the undo and redo buttons. And we could just kind of copy one of these. And uh, let's paste in a couple more. There we go. And for the first one, we want this to say select all. And for this one, we want it to say clear. And let's see, for our accelerator, we want control A because selecting all is the same as hitting control and A on your keyboard, right? So here, let's come over here for the command and let's give this a command of select underscore all. Let's give this other guy a command of clear underscore all. So, okay. That should do that. Now we need to create these two functions. So let's head over to our functions section. Here we go. And let's go uh, select all text. And let's define this as select all. And for now, I'm just going to say pass. And then we also want to clear all text. And so that one was clear underscore all, right? And we can just pass this. So so far, so good. So to select everything, the text widget sort of has a built in tag that you can use called SEL and it, it sort of knows what that is, but we have to create that. So let's, uh, uh, let's go add tag or add SEL tag to select all text. So we would just go my underscore text dot tag underscore add to add a tag like we've done in the past. If we kind of look back here, Let's see, tag add, you know, we've done that before. And this is called SEL, short for selection or select, right? And what do we want to select? We want to select 1.0, because remember the text widget starts, the first line of it is line 1.0. We want to select from line 1.0 to end, right? And that should do the trick. So we could run this guy, python textpad.py. And if we come over here and type some text and then come up here and click select all, boom, it selects it all. So we can then say, for instance, copy it. And then if we wanted to delete it and then come back up here and paste it, it's, it does its thing. So, okay, that's that pretty simple. Now we want to work on the clear all one, even easier. We can just go my underscore text dot delete. And what do we want to delete? We want to delete from line 1.0 to end. And you can see we did it slightly differently here. We put these in quotation marks and we did not put these in quotation marks, but that's how it works for the delete function. So, okay, do that, save this and run it. And if we type some text and then come up here and click clear, boom, it deletes it. If we open a file, there's everything there. If we clear, it clears it. So that's how to do that. Now, one more thing I mentioned, actually, let's run this again. So if we have some text and we hit the control and the A button on our keyboard, I just did, you hold the control button and the A button or the A key 
down at the same time it selects it. So we kind of want that same thing to be bound to this, this button here, this menu item here, which calls our select all function. And we could do that if we want. We don't necessarily have to, right? But we could. So let's just do that real quick. So we come down to the bottom of our code where we had all those other bindings, right? And let's add some uh, select binding. And to do that, we just go root.bind. And this is going to be control dash capital A. And that'll be, we want to fire the select all function when that happens. And let's copy this. And let's also make this for lowercase a, just in case people get confused. And uh, that should work. Now, we got a problem now because whenever we call a binding and a function, remember, whenever you bind something, it passes an event, right? So now our function needs to be looking or listening for an event. So if we come up here, we can pass in that E there. But one more problem. When we have our menu item here, this guy, we now also need to pass something through this function whenever we call the menu item or also, you know, the function, the select all function is listening for an E and right here, we're not passing anything. So we have to pass something and to pass something through a command, we have to use a Lambda, L-A-M-B-D-A. And again, this is a lowercase L, not a capital, it just looks like it was sublime text, drives me crazy. And then here we just pass something and I'll just pass true. You can pass true, false, one, zero, anything you want, just so we're passing something, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it and make sure that worked. So we can, let's see, type some text. We hit control A, that seems to work. We can delete it, try it again, come up here, hit select all, that seems to work. Our clear button still works and that's cool. So kind of a short video today because, you know, construction, everything's crazy here. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, this wasn't too bad visually because uh, we got sort of a makeshift studio set up here while we're doing remodeling and stuff. So, and there has been a lot of banging around since I've been shooting this video. Hopefully it didn't come through through the video. We were, we were able to edit some of it out, but maybe not. We'll see. And uh, thanks for your patience. And uh, in a couple of days, we'll be back to normal. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com, and we'll see you in the next video.